What is going on, multiverses? Welcome back to the channel. We got a whole, like a ton of news to go over today. Aside. Tony in the Multiverses Arcade Discord. By the way, link in the description. You want to be a part of the Multiverses community? Join the link in the description because we get, dare I say, exclusive info here. Like we. Tony's just answered a whole bunch of questions. Like, he didn't just show up and answer two questions and leave. No, he's answering question after question after question after question. It was like, yes. Thank you, Tony. We appreciate you. And then he had to, like, get back to work. But we understand. He's a busy guy. But uh, we got some very, very massive news. So I'm just going to go over a bunch of it. Hopefully, I don't linger on it too much. But uh, Tony answered a question about the NDA. But I think the, the big thing that came out of this was uh, Tony <laughs> or answers with, the December test was our first time showing the game. And it was able to help us learn. The changes that we put in based on the learnings from that test make the game very different. So who the lucky few that did get to play in the tech test in December, whatever you got to play, that, you know, there's a good chance a lot of that was changed. I don't know if it's move sets, uh, you know, movement, uh, character speed, uh, stages. I don't know what they, they mean exactly, but uh, the game is very different. So that's, uh, that's interesting. One thing that maybe comes to mind for me right off the bat was, some people said gameplay speed seemed a little slow, so I don't know if that was an overall thing that uh, a lot of people were giving them feedback about. So maybe they sped up the gameplay speed just a little bit or a lot or something. I don't know. But uh, so the test, the tech test, is not an accurate account of what the game is currently. So the game has been drastically changed, apparently. So yeah, from uh, b big changes have happened in uh, multiverses. Oh, uh, just from their one tech test. And yes, there will be more. We don't have a date on that, but it will include console players at some point. There's no ETA, a little bit more on that in a second. But uh, uh, the other thing here real quick, T Tony does tell us that the game is currently locked at 60 wow. frames per second. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of cool. Maybe if you're on PC, you're like, oh, it's locked, eh, whatever. But still 60 FPS, that's still another positive, positive thing for console gamers, especially. Next up has to do with fan critique and how we might be seeing an update soon, hopefully, hopefully, and uh, it might be on Twitter, but uh, what I'm referring to is the Steven Universe uh, fan critique. Let me throw up the image here real quick. So this was uh, created by Honey, who's uh, an official staff member in the Multiverses Arcade Discord. Again, link in the description, join it, please. But um, so uh, they posted this side-by-side uh, -side comparison and there's a few changes that they uh, Honey made to the, the character's model uh, and uh, some people maybe say it's very minor differences, but uh, Steven Universe is like a very important character to Honey and is kind of like, oh, okay, I get it. You want to be a little protect. You want to make sure the character is looking how they're supposed to, right? So uh, they made the side-by-side the -side comparison of what they changed and what they didn't. And let me throw that up as well in case uh, that's not qu it's not quite clear. But uh, Honey does say something along the lines of, the skin color was changed, the head-to-body ratio was changed, the eyes are uh, further apart, and the hairline is a bit wider and rounder to make the his head uh, less bottom heavy. So uh, it, it might be, you know, minimal kind of changes, but you can actually tell now that uh, we uh, we get information about what was changed here uh, for this. Uh, and Tony did reply to Tony replied that he's going to send it to the team, which is really cool. So Honey replies uh, with, uh, is there any way you can convince the multiverse's uh, Twitter to show us a better view of the changes that they made to the Steven Universe, the model? And Tony flat out says, let me see what I can do. So we might be seeing actual evidence come out very soon about the changes that they've made. And I think that's another good thing that they've done. They've taken fan critique and you know they're listening to it. Player first games, they're living up to their name so far, in my opinion. So it's cool. Uh, they've already said they sent uh, Tony said that he sent this to the team and we might might not guaranteed But uh, he'll see what he could do But we might be getting like uh, an update uh, to see what was officially changed to see how much honey influenced a change for a character model even if it's something little Little bits of changes can really make a big difference in the end thing Like if the eyes are too too close and you just spread them out just a little bit more then you're like, okay That's the character model that I that I remember. That's how I remember them looking so Stuff like that, two thumbs up. Next up is about character moves, and this is actually kind of a big deal, right? So somebody asked the question, can you create your own character moves or something else? And Tony replies with, all gameplay comes from them, player first games, but the IP holder can object. It hasn't happened yet, 
but they can object to it. So we'll take Batman, for example. If they want Batman to do like a a, a ballerina twist, right? Uh, the IP holder can come back and say, oh, wait a minute, no, 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 Batman doesn't do that. So they, they essentially, Player First Games has the freedom to do what they want, but they want to make it authentic to the character, right? And uh, if the IP holder doesn't necessarily agree with how it's going, then yes, they will step in and say, no, we, d we don't want that. We uh, change that or do something or drop it altogether, whatever it is. But it sounds like they have the freedom to come up with moves and uh, make just make them authentic as possible. Because uh, again, continuing, we will try to be really familiar with the characters, uh, though, so the gameplay is authentic. Again, sticking true to what the character does is important because if I play as Batman, I want him to do Batman things. I don't want him to do um, uh, uh, the Flash. Th I don't want Batman to all of a sudden have Flash speed. Like, no. Just stick to the character. Stick to what he does. They're being authentic with it. And, I mean, that's what we would hope for. Next question, like I referred to a little bit earlier in the video, is about when is the next playtest. Unfortunately, we still don't have an exact date, but it's still good news. So, uh... So Kerr over here in the Discord, one of the staff members, asked Tony, I know that you've been keeping us in the dark about when the next playtest will be, but is there an ETA for it yet? And Tony says, not yet, but we're making good progress. And that, that's the thing. I don't, we don't want them to rush this game, right? We want the game to be as polished as possible, make the changes, like it takes time, right? They don't just do game development like, all right, everything's fixed, here's the next playtest. They, got, they want to implement things. The, the feedback that they're uh, receiving or that they have received is very important to them. So they do need time to, to implement this stuff. So, uh, yes, we're all excited. Yes, we want to play. Yes, I want to get my hands on the game because I'm a console player. But I want to, <laughs> I want to play. But uh, he says, not yet. They're making good progress. So hopefully soon, may, maybe, maybe March, maybe is going to be my guess. Yeah, I'll say March for a time frame for uh, the next play test that will include console players. I could be wrong, but uh, we at least got some sort of answer for that. Next up, we got something about gameplay, a question here. And this is actually a good question because we do know that the game is somewhat focused on um, 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 uh, 2v2s, right? We know that that might be one of their, their more pushed modes, but then again, 1v1 might come out on top and everyone might prefer 1v1, but 2v2 is still going to be a mode. So for the people trying 2v2, what happens, somebody asked the question here, um, what if our teammate leaves the match? Will there be a bot that will replace our teammates that plays for them? And uh, will that result in some sort of uh, penalty for the teammate leaving? That's a very good question because how many games do you jump online? You're on a, you're in a team and then all of a sudden you have somebody leave, right? And now you're at a big disadvantage. So like this type of game, especially if 2v2 is the mode, your teammate leaves, now it's a two-on-one and you're going to get your butt whooped the whole time. Maybe maybe you're actually pretty good at the game and you can overcome the odds, but, but what happens in that case? And Tony says he can't reveal it yet, but we'll handle this correctly because it's important for the competitive integrity. So that does sound good. I like the idea, at least it's an idea at least. I like the idea that a bot would replace it if they instantly, uh, you know, you get in the first match and your teammate DCs all of a sudden and you just get a bot that replaces them. At least you have something. I know bots might not be the greatest. We'll have to see how computers play in this game. Maybe they're actually really good. Maybe they're level 10 computers. We have no clue. Maybe they're level 99 computers. We don't even know. But uh, the idea that uh, they have something in place that they're, he literally says, we'll handle this correctly. I got faith in that. Uh, again, we'll have to wait and see what the outcome is for this, but uh, it's good to know that they, they've thought about this. Uh, so, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times. Like, uh, recently I've been playing a lot of uh, Dead by Daylight and Gears 5, and I can't tell you how many times a teammate leaves and now I'm just down a teammate. It's like, now we're at a disadvantage. Why did you join the match? 3, 2, 1, go, and then you disconnect. Why? What's the point of you doing that? You just... You did that just to get it back at your teammates who you probably don't know because you're playing with a bunch of randoms. What's the point? What's the point? So uh, it's cool that they have something hopefully planned here and they're going to handle it correctly, but uh, good news nonetheless. <laughs> and we'll end off with uh, something that, uh, well, we didn't get too much insight on, but we, we got to know the official name of something. So somebody asked the question, I noticed this bread in Arya's uh, battle pass 
Is this a type of currency? Good question. What does it do? Because it has like, what, X5 next to it. So is it a type of uh, in-game currency or will this give you some kind of uh, in-game advantage? Like what, what, is the, what does the bread do? And Tony just tells us that it's called toast. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> At least we now know it's officially called toast. What does it do? Who knows? <laughs> but we have toast in multiverses. Toast confirmed. Uh, game's complete. Release it tomorrow. We're all good. But um, yeah, that is, uh, that's going to be it for today. So big news nonetheless, right? They're making major changes to the game already. Uh, 60 FPS is what the game is locked into. Hopefully we get to see some sort of changes to character models from fan critiques. Possibly. Possibly, but uh, we got toast in the game, so that's good. I think that's, you know, that's everybody's most wanted feature. We got toast. But uh, a lot of things, nonetheless, uh, good stuff all around. I hope you guys enjoyed it as always. I'm sure Tony will be back answering more questions as he always does. And, you know, we'll be here covering it. <laughs>